Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about A Narrow Fellow in the Grass, written by Emily Dickinson. Now, before I go into this topic, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. Now, A Narrow Fellow in the Grass by Emily Dickinson, very, very interesting poem here. What's happening within this poem? Well, within this poem, we get introduced to nature, all right? So we're outside, there's a snake, and there's a boy, right? And again, snakes are scary. We know this. This has been established, right? This has been firmly established that snakes are scary. I don't like snakes, and, I, and I'm pretty sure you don't like snakes. Uh, and, you know, throughout history, we look at the Bible, we look at poetry, we look at the world. Most people are terrifying of snakes because snakes are terrifying. And within this poem, we get introduced to a snake that's carefully, gracefully moving around in nature, you know, moving around the grass, slippering and sliding and slippering, you know, the sloping and, and going around the grass. And the snake is confident and the snake is not scared of a little boy. The snake knows how to hunt. Um, usually snakes are, are terrifying creatures because, first of all, they can kill you with their venom. Uh, they can they can strangle you. You know, that's one thing that's scary about snakes is that sometimes they strangle you to death. They squeeze you until you're dead. That's not, it's just not fun. All right. That's not fun behavior uh, because they can strangle you until you're dead. Uh, so no snakes have uh, lots of tools in the tool bag to kill you. Um, and and, and we're, if we go deeper, right, let's go uh, into Christianity. The snake has not, you know, has not favored well, okay? The snake has been uh, side by side with the devil. Uh, the snake is known as a deceiver. Um, you know, in the Bible, God says that, uh, the, the snake is cunning, right? It, it, it's wise. It's, 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 it knows what it's doing. Um, it's, it's smarter than the other beasts. Uh, and so we know the snake from a more deeper meaning, from a religious meaning, uh, from a spiritual meaning that the snake is conniving. It's evil. It's wicked. Uh, um, you know, a Satan. Um, so the snake and Satan are side by side for being wicked and evil and cunning and tricky and crafty. Even though it's like crawling on its belly, it can bring a powerful foe down. So imagine that powerful foe with a little boy in the field, uh, what that means. So yes, we get introduced to, uh, the, you know, nature, uh, the boy and this lush landscape, but at the same time, we we see this powerful creature that is capable of killing the little boy. So it, it brings different ideas here, different thoughts here about what's going on. Number one, it reminds us as humans that we're not all powerful, that we have our limitations, and there are creatures like the snake that can that could bite us down, that could strangle us down, that could take us down. So that makes you think twice about your place in the universe, about your place in life. So that's one thing that the poem tackles at. The other thing that the poem tackles at is the human condition, okay? The human condition about control. How much control do we have over the natural things of this world? You know, there are most creatures on earth can take us down within seconds, okay? There's some animals, you know, they just grab you, they, gra they grab you down, and they can kill you right then and there, okay? Right, within seconds, certain animals, small animals, big animals, there's some animals that have the right type of tools and venom and all that kind of stuff that can really take you down whenever they want to. Um, so that, you know... This poem, in terms of deeper meaning here, there's a lot of things that are coming in. It's the snake, what the snake symbolizes um, spiritually, symbolically, uh, religiously, evil, deception, wisdom, uh, it, the way that it glides, it, it separates the grass, and it can move around and kill different things. Um, so we can see the power and control with the snake. And also, the poem talks about sometimes we all have to encounter the snake. In life, we have snakes to encounter. Um, snakes have always been used as symbols of power of deception of trials and tribulation um so you know maybe one day you have to encounter your own snake uh and, and again uh snakes are crafty they're they're in the grass it's a narrow fellow in the grass people this is a narrow fellow in the grass so maybe the snake is not the biggest animal out there, but it can sliver around right it can sliver around until it kills you that's what's scary about the snake, right? It can whisper gently until it kills you. So that, that you have to take that into account. So 
yeah, fascinating, fascinating poem. So you can read it for yourself. You're going to find some different meanings, some different things in there. But again, this poem provides us two different things, a human, a snake, nature itself, uh, the different things that these things mean. I mean, you can look in deep into the nature um, in, in of itself. That will reveal some things about this poem and what it's saying, what it's ultimately saying. But but um, overall, what this poem is talking about um, is what snake means to humans, um, you know, what type of control we have, where we are in the universe, the human condition, um, the fact that we're not the masters of the universe, the fact that there are there are challenges and tribulations, there are some snakes that we have to encounter in our lives one day, uh, and the fact that, um, well, some things have more control in nature than we do, you know, the snake can glide and and scheme and, and find food while we're just like the little boy, we're just kind of like hoping that it just passes us by and not come at us because... Well, we're trembling, and what if one day it attacks us? So you got to be ready for that, or are you just going to lay there and, and die? So that's a lot to take in. But that's my summary. That's my analysis of this poem. Please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.